Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. F -F episode 1218, 1218. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, plus the return of the fascinating news segment, Matthews News. We find out about someone that we lost that was a very influential artist. Mike's Daily Podcast. In our world of music. In the world of music that I enjoy. But I must sing... Mike's Daily Podcast. For you, a song. And I'm not as good a singer, so whatever. But I'm gonna... You know, you should sing anyway. Because sometimes there's so much for you to say. And you've got a, something in your heart. You've got to let it out through musical notes. And then that's why there's a piano playing behind me and there's some goats. I said, and then there's some goats. Where the hell are goats? Mike's Daily Podcast. The last show is called Gloat or Gloating because of the Mike's Republican Gloat. Daily. And they're all happy. Podcast. They got the White House. Yeah. Some say, oh, this is a mandate against Obama. The past eight years caused this to happen. No. No. Hillary got a ton of votes. You can't call it a mandate. But if she got, like, no votes, she got, like, hardly any. But whatever. It has it, the, the polls. The polls, the polls, the polls. I don't trust polls anymore. I'm done with polls. So just get those out. And I heard some people... I, I heard a podcast from a, a news radio show where the guy said something like, yeah, polls don't work. Anyway, let's look at the exit polls. And it was just, what? No. They're, they, they're ruined. Polls are ruined. They're going to take a long, long time. You know, the election of 2012, it was the Republicans got badly beaten and they needed to take a long, long time to rebuild themselves. Well, polls got beaten in this election. And they're going to take a long, long time to be rebuilt. Now, I would like to say, though, it does seem from the millennials that I know, although I, one millennial that I thought for sure wasn't going to vote, he ended up voting. So good on him. But I do feel a lot of millennials that were leaning towards Bernie. Look who just walked in. And then saw Hillary was in there. They just decided not to vote. And it that really is sad. Um... I, I don't know if some of it had to do with eight years of Obama. And when you grow up in a world where Obama's been president the whole time, and it seems like he just handily wins every election, Democrats handily win every presidential election, you start to think, oh, I really don't have to do anything. The Democrats will be president anyway. Anyway. Cafe. Anyway. Oh my gosh, where'd it go? Anyway. There we go. Thank you. Um, it, it, you can't just accept that things are going to happen now. I hope this was a lesson that the millennials learned that, no, you got to put some skin in the game and you got to try. Now, I know that actually a lot of them that supported Bernie went beyond the pale of what they needed to do. They went and, and knocked on doors and doors opened like the one that just opened and someone else just came in and... That's amazing and commendable. I'd like to welcome a new listener, Rhonda. She's supposedly following me now on the podcast world. Thank you, Rhonda. I don't know if Rhonda's a millennial or not, but thank you for do voting or not voting. Ah! All right, I have all these characters that walked in. I should say hi to them. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. Hi. To disgruntled fiddle player, tell you what? What? Yeah, well, I know you know what I'm thinking right now. You're thinking you would sure like to drink a large glass of delicious strawberry lemonade. Well, yeah, of course, but I'm actually thinking that, yeah, Trump is president now, and I'm a happy man, and it's a new day in America. Is it gonna is it gonna be a safe day in America? Am I okay? As long as your protesters don't ruin everything by walking around and making a bunch of noise. 
they were walking around making a bunch of noise yesterday, disgruntled fiddle player, and it was fun. Uh, when I was driving home from work and going up Mission Boulevard in Hayward, I saw a whole class. A whole, looked like a bunch of high school students. And they were obeying the laws. They were on the sidewalk. They were cheering. They were getting honks from people on the road. Big truck was honking for them, and they were all happy about that. They had their signs, their colorful signs. It was very 60s. It made me very happy. The girls had their hairs, hair, hairs braided. There was braided hairs everywhere. It was so 60s yesterday. But what I'm really happy about is the political ads are gone. Oh my gosh, those were so annoying. And I will say that Hillary's were really annoying this time around. So I hope that whole campaign team is gone. We know Hillary will never run again. And so hopefully maybe that will end all the horrible. Just it was it was not a good campaign. I guess we can say that hindsight, but go to your happy place, Mike. Go to your happy place. I figured out what my happy place is. Back when I was a kid, we would go to the beach, Marina Del Rey, near Los Angeles, and I would be on my boogie board, and I'd be bobbing up and down in the waves, waiting to catch a big wave. And I remember the sun was starting to set. Oh, look at this. And here's today's podcast picture. Look who just walked in, the podcast picture. It is not of a sunset. I, that's why I take a lot of podcast pictures of sunsets. But actually, today's podcast picture is from Santa Barbara. I went to school at UCSB, and that is the courthouse building in Santa Barbara, where actually Michael Jackson had to go one time for one of his things, because he was a resident of uh, Santa Barbara County. But that is the courthouse. It's a beautiful courthouse. If you ever get the chance, there's this tower that I have in the picture. If you go on that tower, you get the most beautiful 360 view of Santa Barbara. So see that picture now at mikesdailypodcast.com. When I was, uh, you know, planning to get married, uh, my then wife at the time and I were discussing of getting married at this courthouse. But apparently you have to get on a waiting list and there's all kinds of variables that come into play that make it not very suitable. But my happy place was being on a boogie board, bobbing up and down in the waves at Marina Del Rey. And the sun was kind of starting to set, kind of arching over the sky, getting close to the horizon. And I think about those days, and I think we would go there on Sundays. And I would think about my life and how how this was awesome, bobbing up and down on the waves. And then eventually catching a wave. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. I don't know how I put up with the water. I go in the water now. It's so freaking cold in California. Because I've been spoiled by going to Daytona Beach where my mom lives and going in the water. It's so warm and lovely. But, uh, okay, so should we do this real quick? All right, it's the uh, whiny white man wine list. Wine. Well, I like it. The whiny white man wine list. It amazes me that... White, whiny white men still have something to whine about. Your your guy got into office. What do you have to whine about now? It's just sort of, you know, during the Bush years, they whined about Nancy Pelosi the whole time. Now they're going to just whine about stuff like this. Protests continue as the left rejects the outcome of the election. I already told you I enjoyed some of the protests. Now, the ones where stuff is getting broken... And stuff that's wrong, obviously. But in this whiny white man wine list, it says in the whining, likely the same people who mock Trump for indicating the same. Some protests have become right. Liberal thugs vandalize monuments with racist graffiti. Once again, liberals trash businesses who are now fuming. Many on Twitter are calling for Trump's assassination. Aaron Sorkin, the creator of West Wing, wrote, Hate was given hope by Trump's win. USA Today assisted with the headline, Young people protest Trump victory as KKK plans celebration. Wee! Wee! One more. 
for a big union. Our, our democratic republic is vibrant and alive. It is not resigned. It is capable of delivering a result so confounding it knocks you into the next room. Election of Trump, a bewildering sight to see. They're, they find that bizarre for people to figure out why that is a bewildering. It is a bewildering sight. So, oh, and it says Newsweek AP still holding out hope for Clinton win. What? That's, I don't know. This list is ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. And what I shall do with it now is this. There we go. Well, I think we should get to the interesting news segment now called Matthew's News. Check out all the past shows at mikesdailypodcast.com and the past podcast pictures and other things at mikesdailypodcast.com oh there's an AP thing you can click on that and buy stuff and I mean a Amazon thing not an AP thing don't trust any polls ever uh, yeah, then and you can buy stuff, whatever you're going to buy on Amazon. Go through that at mikesdailypodcast.com. There is also a link to PayPal. You'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. And there's also past interviews, too. Okay, Matthew's News. Matthew's News. I lived in the rain for so long. So sad to hear about Leonard Cohen. Do you know who he is? That was a little bit of a song that we just played by Leonard Cohen. But yes, he is the Hughley, Hughley, hugely, so huge. In fact, he deserves the G. Hugely influential singer and songwriter whose work spanned nearly 50 years. He died at age of 82. His, co- his uh, label confirmed his death On his Facebook page It is with profound sorrow We report the legendary Poet, songwriter, and artist Leonard Cohen Has passed away We have lost one of music's most revered And prolific visionaries A memorial will take place in Los Angeles At a later date The family requests privacy During their time of grief Cause of death and exact date of death Was not given Cohen's son Adam Wrote in a statement to Rolling Stone My father passed away peacefully at his home in LA With the knowledge that he had completed What he felt was one of his greatest records He was writing up until his last moments With his unique brand of humor Unmatched in his creativity Insight and crippling candor Leonard Cohen was a true visionary Whose voice will be sorely missed His manager wrote in a statement I was blessed to call him a friend And for me to serve that bold artistic spirit firsthand Was a privilege and a great gift I actually knew someone that was a backup singer for him for many years. And uh, also, you know, it was interesting that he wrote that song, Marianne, for a muse of his that he remained very close with all through her life. Um, They were boyfriend-girlfriend for a while. She passed away about a year ago, and I talked about it on my podcast. He wrote a letter to her saying, you know, you're, you're going to leave soon. I think she had cancer. And he said, I will soon be following you. It's interesting. It's sort of like they were a married couple. You know, they were that close. And when one goes in some married couples, the other is soon to follow. He was a, uh, he did spend some time in Greece back in the early days. He wrote some poetry. He, he published some poetry books that in the early days did not do so well for him. So he went to New York City in 1966 and was part of the folk music scene there. And that's where he started to get some attention. Judy Collins helped him out a lot. Um, Joni Mitchell, uh, he was the songwriter of choice for people like Willie Nelson and James Taylor. And so he will be a legacy that will live long and last for many, many years, his music will. Um, he also had, there was a tribute album to him that came out in the early 90s. REM was on it and other bands. It's a great album. Check it out. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Well, next show it is going to be the wonderful Madam Rutabaga, Valentina, Bison Bentley. Have a great Friday. Uh, if you're going to protest today, don't break anything. Be peaceful. And, and be a good example for um, 
you know, what America is all about, freedom of expression, but at the same time, we don't want to be like the idiots at Trump rallies where people uh, get uh, hurt. No, yeah, don't use bad language. Don't be racist. That's a good thing. I think we should all do that. And in, in the end, this is all going to be okay. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Uh, I didn't get to say anything. I make the roof beer. Oh, oh. Dang it. Thanks, Brewmaster.